morning, my name is Veronica and welcome to another edition of GSE at Home, bringing you a little bit of science every weekday at 10am. During our tour of the solar system series, we've been looking at wonderful planets, but I wanted to talk about my favourite planet of all. This planet is third from the sun and it's very interesting, so let's have a little visit. Do you know which planet this is? Do you recognise it? What about if we did this? Did this help? From space, there's no right way up or upside down. So if you're out in space, this is what you might see. Pretty cool, right? The bits of rock and space dust that make up the Earth today formed around four and a half billion years ago. Earth is a terrestrial planet, which means it's made up from rock, just like Mars, Venus, and Mercury. It's not a perfect sphere, it's slightly squished at each pole and fatter around the middle. This squished sphere is called an oblate spheroid. This oblate spheroid, which is really fun to say, is covered in a thin atmosphere made up of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, that's the stuff we breathe, and the rest is things like water vapour, other gases like argon, carbon dioxide. This atmosphere is important because it keeps us safe and warm on the surface by absorbing some of the sun's radiation and trapping it, trapping that heat to keep us nice and cosy. It's called the blue planet by some. What would you call it? It was described as a fragile blue marble by the Apollo 17 crew who took this wonderful image of our planet. Look how beautiful that is. You can see all of that wonderful blue, that's our oceans. 71% of Earth's surface is covered in water. To give you an idea of how much this is, I have 100 bits of rice here. You can do this too with whatever you have 100 bits of, like pasta or Lego. Now I'm going to take 71 of those bits of rice and put them to one side. And now you can see that this is the amount of water that covers the Earth's surface. Vast seas and oceans, rivers and lakes, or lochs as we call them here in Scotland. The other surface and land areas are covered in mountains, lushed forests, huge deserts, both hot and cold. There are lots of things I could natter on and on and on about with our wonderful planet, so I've decided to whittle it down to just three favourite things. Number one, life on Earth. It's pretty special. Number two, Earth has my favourite moon, the moon. And last but not least, number three, it's my home, along with other humans. <laughs> my first favourite thing is life on Earth. Our planet Earth is the only place that we know of that has life. Sure, there are lots of books, comics, TV programmes and films that like to imagine alien life, but scientists have yet to discover any evidence that it actually exists. Yet, I'm hopeful. Our planet is covered in life. You can find it almost anywhere you look. The oceans, the land, the trees, and even the birds and insects flying around. So what makes Earth so special? What do we need for life? The very first thing, the very first ingredient that you need for life is water. We have lashings of this stuff because life sure gets thirsty. You also need elements like carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, amongst other things. These can make up things like hydrocarbons and amino acids. That's like the building blocks of life and the components of an energy source because life gets thirsty, but it should sure get hungry as well. On Earth, there are lots of different environments like dry deserts or wet rainforests, but deserts have life too and very little water. Creatures have had a long time to evolve and adapt to their environment. You can even see deserts from space, like this image from the International Space Station, the ISS, that's orbiting 400 kilometres above Earth's surface. Other environments include the vast oceans, filled with a variety of fish, squid, whales, and even teeny tiny microbes. Rainforests that are the lungs of our planets and fill the atmosphere with fresh oxygen and flourish with so much life that we haven't even got names for them all yet. Even the cold, dry deserts of Antarctica, where life clings on to the smallest droplets of water. All the different environments harbour different types of life that has adapted to and evolved to survive in their habitats. All of this makes up the delicate, balanced ecosystem. 
of our fragile blue marble. It really is beautiful to look at. Planet Earth, like other planets, has a natural satellite, the moon. The moon is my second favourite thing about our planet, but how did we get our moon? During the early formation of the Earth, a massive object about the size of Mars called Thea smashed into Earth in an awesome collision about four and a half billion years ago. The material from Earth and the remains of Thea that smashed into orbit collected and formed our moon. The same side of the moon is always facing us here on Earth. It's called tidal locking. The moon does rotate, but it, strangely enough, it rotates at the same speed of it going around our planet. So we, ever, we only ever see one side. It's called the near side of the moon. Do you know what the further away side is called? No, it's not the dark side of the moon, grown-ups. That's a Pink Floyd album. It's the far side of the moon. Something that we didn't see until the Soviet Luna 3 spacecraft sent back this picture of the far side of the moon in October 1959. Not that long ago at all. But this is the side that we're used to. Do you see all of those lumps and bumps? Those are called craters. Craters are caused by impacts from things like meteorites. On Earth, we have our atmosphere to protect us from lots of impacts from smaller meteors. They break up in the atmosphere. But the moon doesn't have much of an atmosphere. Do you see those dark patches? Those are called the maria, which means seas or oceans. But they're not really seas or oceans. They're ancient lava flows so old. The last time they were active is when the dinosaurs were roaming the Earth. Imagine being a dinosaur looking up to the moon and seeing fresh lava pouring over the surface. No, just me. <laughs> On the Apollo missions to the moon, those dark patches were preferred for landing spots because the surfaces were a lot smoother, much safer to land on. 50 years ago, on the 20th of July, 1969, the Apollo 11 mission landed on the moon. NASA has plans in motion to go back to the moon by 2024 and to go further still with humans going beyond their own planet and stepping foot in another world as they make plans to send a mission all the way to Mars. Maybe humans will be a space-fading and interplanetary species. Wow. My third favourite thing, do you remember? This planet is home to a creature that you can see the signs of from space, especially on the nighttime side of the planet, where these web-like patterns light up the sky. This was taken from the ISS. Can you tell what it is? This is a huge city full of humans. This is Moscow in Russia. Isn't it beautiful and strange? This image might be more familiar. It's a city within the United Kingdom. Have you got it? It's London. There are lots of cities, towns and villages where humans live. They have even been found in some of the most remote and harsh environments. Humans really do get everywhere. Humans have existed on planet Earth for around 200,000 years, but they've really been their most productive over the last few thousand years. There's 7.5 billion humans on the surface of this planet. It's more than doubled in 50 years. In 1970, there was 3.5 billion. Because humans are so clever, they have managed to use um, all of the resources around them to power their cities, build houses and cars, and move around from one end of the planet all the way to the other using aeroplanes. A lot of recent advances of human industry um, uses something called fossil fuels, like uh, coal, crude oil and natural gases. All this new activity and burning of fossil fuels has caused Earth's climate to change and the global temperature has increased dramatically since the Industrial Revolution of the 1800s, where they built a lot of factories and burned lots of coal to power them. Using these fossil fuels increases the amount of greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases, these are gases that trap heat from the sun in Earth's atmosphere. We want the Earth to maintain a certain amount of heat, but if it becomes too warm, it can have massive um, effects on planet Earth. 
In this video, you can see the Arctic. Every year around September, when it gets to the seasonal minimal, it is measured from space. You can see that gradually over the years, the amount of ice is getting less and less. This changes the Arctic environment and can have a huge impact on the life that calls it home. This sea ice is very important to polar bears. They depend on it. They need it to find food, find mates, and to travel around. Without it, polar bears have no choice but to travel further inland with very little access to the food that they depend on for survival. So what do humans do to stop it? Humans need to keep this planet flourishing, not just for the animals, but for themselves as well. One way to do it is to use different energy sources, things like renewable energy, such as solar panels that get their energy from the sun, um, or wind turbines that get their energy from the wind, among many others. Both those examples provide power to the planet without the planet warming effects of fossil fuels. Everyone needs to pitch in to help, from you and I to larger companies, industries and governments. We all need to play our part. Humans are clever, remember? Very, very clever. They need to think about how to fix this problem. Space agencies like ESA, the European Space Agency, slit up the Climate Change Initiative. They can monitor global change using Earth observation techniques, so observing um, Earth from space. Using these observations and data to help understand exactly what's happening and help manage climate change. I think humans will figure, out the, figure it out with renewable energy if we really try. Remember, they figured out some really tricky tough things before, like how to get humans from planet Earth all the way to the moon. Those are my favourite things about the planet Earth. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please let me know what your favourite things are in the comments um, and let us know which planet you would like us to do next. Um, that is all from me. Um, let's look after our wonderful planet Earth and look after each other. Have a wonderful day, everyone.